who will all offer the prayer of meditation. Loving Father, Father of blessings, Father of happiness, Father who makes us satisfied, Father who heals. At this time, we thank you for loving me the most. By loving between you and I, he says, to solve all problems, may we love only God and to receive material blessing for even our storehouses overflow. Father, for me, your one and only son, you killed him. What is it that I doubt? What is it that I need to think about? May I only be a slave in front of you, to only love you to the point of death. Am I still someone who is disobeying God's word by loving myself? Am I someone who is foolish by loving myself? Lord, rather than loving myself, may I become someone who loves you and to receive all the blessings that you have promised. By realizing through this word how far I am from you, now I know all this time that I've lived, all we have done is to torment you. But from this time, may our lives change. We believe that we will receive help this dawn. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So let's hear the Father's voice today and to find health, to be happy and to receive all the blessings where we do more well. When you go to a hospital, you know, they say if there's a good a good um, needle to receive, you'll be lining up, but you're receiving something even better for free and yet you won't receive this. Let's find Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. Where is the fake church? If it's missing Christ... That is a fake church. That's what God has appointed. And so, you know, in good times, you wander around to those places, you ruin your life, and then you get disease, and then you come seeking this. What is that? It's so sad. You ruin yourself, your children, your family. You ruin everything. No matter how much you hear the good news, you don't hear, and then you go off and do whatever you please. And it's when you've you've ruined your family's life and you're going to hell, well, you know, they say, oh, well, th when that person died, their face was white, so, so you know, they, they must have gone to heaven. No. Does that mean all blacks go to hell? Without Christ, you know, God, when he says, Matthew chapter 23, those who deserve wrath, why go to those places? When you ask that person, Matthew chapter 25, oh, someone's there and someone else is there. It, do you go to heaven because of those people or it's so sad how long do you want to live like that jeremiah chapter 26 how much do you have to be hit for you to for you to realize so let's read proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 a tranquil heart is life to the body but passion is rottenness to the bones so I've given this word to you many times. This is this is the basics, and yet you're still not doing this. Verse 30, a tranquil heart is life to the body. So this peace in your heart, it seems simple, but without forced out repentance, it doesn't work. To have this peace, this peace in your heart, you have to do forced out repentance. It doesn't just end with peace in your heart. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, your heart's at peace, and then you go toward seeking God. So in this world, there is no way to have a peaceful heart. It's when you do forced out repentance that you have a peaceful heart. And it doesn't end there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, you go toward God. So the only way to go toward God is to have a peaceful heart. It's forced out repentance. So that's when you have life in your body. You have health. So does God only make us have a healthy body? What, to become a fattened cow? It's not saying that. 3 John verse 2, if your spirit soul does well, you go to heaven. Everything does well on this earth, and he even gives you health in your body. So here when it says health in your body, it's not to raise up a beast, to fatten it up, to eat it up. No, it's starting with a peaceful heart. It seems simple, 
But this peaceful heart, there's no world learning or religion that can do this. Where can they make you have a peaceful heart? There's nowhere. And yet people want to live with a peaceful heart. Why? Because that's the way, way God created us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. So because he created like us like this, we all want to have this peaceful heart. But the way to have a peaceful heart, it's only four-step repentance. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. The 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 peace of our hearts and reconciliation with God, it's all by the blood of the cross, the blood of Christ. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, it's by the blood of Christ. When we repent, what happens? Our hearts at peace, and then we go toward God to be reconciled with God. So there's nothing but four-step repentance. So a sermon without Christ, without four-step repentance, it sends your soul to hell. That's Colossians chapter 2. 2 verse 8, why go to those places saying it's a church? The Bible says if you go to those places, you'll ruin your soul. Why go there? And then there's insane people who say, well, I have this position given to me this year, so let me end this first. Well, what's going to happen if you go to hell before then? What about all those sins and disasters that you store up in that time? There are idiots like that. How can that be a man? They don't understand words that tell them to do well. They act like they're so smart, but they choose the things that are idiotic. And then it's when they're about to die, that's when they have a fit. This is God's word. We're not doing any other things. God's word says a peaceful heart. Where do we get a peaceful heart? It's only four step repentance. So please read the Bible verses that you've been given. Where do we receive this this peace this peace? Colossians chapter one verse twenty, Ephesians chapter two, verse thirteen. So if we obey God's word, he is responsible, but we do whatever we please, and then you say all these wrong things. So it doesn't just end with ruin, ruining myself. You ruin three and four generations. If you're a beast that is killing yourself and your children, then what are you doing towards others? You've only done filthy things. How can that be a man? It's these fake Christians that have ruined Korea. Those people who don't believe, at least they, they don't deserve wrath. So those who believe fakely, these pastors, these denominations, they're the ones that have ruined this country and they're, and they're shameless. These beasts who are killing themselves and their children. You know, how could they have a conscience as a man? They're so shameless. And yet they say they believe in Jesus. They, they, they make these mobs. They think that if you have a large number, that it's something. It's so sad. Why don't you have health? Because you don't have peace in your heart. Because you always live with, with t torment in your heart. That's evil. If you worry and you're anxious, do you have faith or not? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, you don't even have faith. So these people without faith, and they call themselves a pastor, an elder, a deacon. Well, what's the point of that? It's nothing. You, you're a demon without faith. Why is it? They don't want to hear when God's word is preached to them rightly. Because the evil, they don't want to depart from evil. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 19. Because they have demons inside of them, they don't want to depart. So when you pray, those demons, they don't want to leave. It's according to the Bible, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 19. Because <clears throat> you want to do those filthy things. It's so sad. So then what happens? If you live like that, then read. So a tranquil heart is life to the bones, but passion, envy is rottenness to the bones. So if you don't have a peaceful heart, you're filled with envy, which means you're of the flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. You're envious, you're, you argue. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. This is a life where you hate to keep God in your heart. You slander others. Even if you slander, you're a demon that's going to hell. But these Christian newspapers that come out saying they're slandering others, you know, if you're judging others, that's not a Christian, that's not a Christian newspaper. You're, you're above shamans, and that means you're above shamans and demons. How? How can that be written? In a Christian newspaper, they don't know what what makes them live or die. 
So these, this heart of hating to keep God in your heart, where you're envious and you're grumbling, and that means your bones rot. Blood comes from your bones, but all that blood rots. So you have all these diseases. You can't have your diseases healed. Who? Who has this? Those who believe in Jesus faithfully. Because you've gone to those places that lie, it's when you're completely rotten, that's when you seek healing. Why do that? God's word, there is no lie. This is the truth of the Almighty One. Even now, it is living and working. So what are you doing now? Is your heart at peace? So he's asking us. Someone who's worrying and anxious, they'll be ruined exactly. Someone who worries and is as anxious, they don't have faith. These fakes say that they have faith even though they worry. But he only gives faith to those without worries. If you have, so if you have faith, you don't worry. So let's find 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. So you worry this about, about this and you worry about that and then you say you have faith. What, what demon says that? Faith is to have not even one worry. You entrust all your worries to God and you're at peace. And it's to that person that God gives faith. So all faith is to have all peace. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. It's so sad. So because you don't know what faith is, you just say, I believe. Even now, if you listen to the Christian broadcasting, they say, they say, believe, and yet no one answers. And they say, you have to believe this. You have to believe that Jesus was resurrected. Yeah, right. You have to do four-step repentance for God to give you the faith of faith. If I could believe, then why would God need to give a gift of faith? There is only one God. These people without faith, and yet they expect solutions. God's promise is that things will happen according to your faith. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. So you have to have this faith. You have to receive this gift of faith. You have to be able to love him. You see these people don't do well. On their birthdays, for a feast, they'll borrow money. But for God, they don't do anything to him. They'll, they may give thanks with their leftovers. What, you think God needs our thanksgiving? You know, um, I'm living because of him. So, you know, the way you love, already the order is wrong. So to yourself, you'll spend $1,000 and to God, you may give $10. You know, you think God's going to be deceived? So those people who don't do well, they put themselves first. So because that means they, they're living with demons because they can't come to a knowledge of the truth. And yet that's what they're always doing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. So let's live by receiving blessings. Let's read together. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Amen. So those people with demons, without faith. If you don't have faith, you have demons. Because you either have the Holy Trinity inside of you or demons. There's no such thing as an empty house. So these religions that try to empty themselves, it's a lie. It's not going to work. You cannot empty yourself. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. If you have an empty house, then seven more demons will come in. So you can't become empty. So either you have demons or the Holy Trinity. So the, having the Holy Trinity is faith. Otherwise, you're demons. But the fact that you're worrying, the fact that you love money, that's 10,000 evils. But when I look at you, Oh, why are you going to that church? Oh, there's lots of saints there. So, you know, my business will do well. So you're you're always, you know, going on about money. That's 10,000 evils. How can that be? A deacon or an eldress or... It's so sad. Oh, if I go there, it will, it will bring me benefit. You know, benefit that I make, you'll be ruined. God has to give you benefit. But you have these human thoughts, these these thoughts that are trash. Oh, why are you complaining? Oh, because the pay is not right for me. So again, you're going on about money. It's so filthy. Your conscience is seared. You have demons. It's, you're the only one that doesn't know. A spiritual pastor who's right in front of God, they know it's because of money. They know what it's, they, they know everything. They can see. So if you envy, your bones will rot. If your bones rot, 
These days, not just in Korea, but in the world, there's so many people who have to have blood transfusions. Why? Because their blood rots. That because they're not getting the right blood. So because they have this rotting blood, they have to change their blood over, you know, twice a week. So their arm gets cut up. They have to lose their money. So all that money you've earned, you end up spending, you know, and then you just die. And doesn't end with you. Then you pass it down to your children. So if that happened to you at 30, then your children get it at 10 because they receive what was their parents earlier. And then they, they're born with high blood pressure and diabetes because it's been, they've received it from their parents. So someone who is so filthy to pass these things onto the children, how can that be a man? That means you've chosen so many filthy things to do towards others. So according to God's word, in the 21st century, we'll be so filthy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. More and more, it will become evil, so it will be so filthy. You know, all these people who talk about, oh, the 21st century. The only thing that's happened is, you know, the Korean economy, economy was ruined. These people that come out saying, oh, I'm a university professor. Why is it that their family have become beggars? Because more and more there's evil. You know, people, they take off with this money and take off with that money. So for us to have our conscience ruined so that we can live, others can live. God has given us his way, but we won't follow after that. And people instead talk about oh, what we should do about the economy. You know, those, those people, they're thieves. It happens according to the Bible. Why not follow this and instead listen to other things? Those people who listen to evil things, are they a good person or a bad person? They're an evil person. That's why you listen to that, because it's like with like. It's so sad. Oh, why are you a state minister or to, to boast of my name? Then you're a thief. From the beginning, you're a thief. So why, why put someone up like that? The fact that those people who want to run for elections, you know, I want to do this. Is there any one of those people that are right? So we shouldn't give them a wage. If you do want to do that, then once you become a government official, you know, your wealth should be taken away, you know, and then let's see if any people come out. Then no thieves will come out. Only the true patriots will come out. It's so sad. To be a patriot is where you put your own things out to, to, to be a patriot. But how is it that you're trying to steal other people's things? If you become president, you know, you should be moved to a small apartment and your wealth has should be given up. Then no one would come out. But then you're given some, you know, retirement package. And what, you think people are doing this to be a patriot? No, it's to boast of their own names. I don't know why people choose the things that aren't going to work. If you believe in God rightly, even if you're not given any wage from the country, there's unlimited things in front of you. If you are a pastor, you do according to God's word, you receive his prepared blessings and, and to share it with others. That's a life of faith. And so if you, if someone, if you make someone like that in government to hear God's voice like Joseph, that's how you do well. This is the word of truth. Except there's no one who understands this word of truth. It's so sad. So does that mean we too should be ruined? Let's not be ruined. By the dawn's help, let's live a life of faith. Only God gives this gift of faith. So what is this faith? It's peace in my heart. It's joy. And then what happens? Because your bones are healthy, you automatically have health. And then because God because of wisdom is his wisdom and knowledge he always makes us go the, the good way so when you hear our people how they don't hear the gospel that's that's ruin if they did know this this then you know straight away they change it so that you know they take away the wealth of the government officials and they'd be given just as uh, some rations 
and minimum, a minimum pay when they retire. And even if they weren't given that, someone who walks with God, they know that there's unlimited blessings, blessings without worries. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. So those people should be doing, being the president because they truly are a patriot. But those people who are going on about money and who, who want to boast of their names, you know, all they end up doing is, is having discussions. And so... He says, starting with peace in your heart. A peaceful heart is how you receive health. It's when you're sick that you wake up. It's after God takes everything away at the end, that's when he hits your body. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 20. It's when you're sick, that's when you wake up. That's when people kneel to God. So, You know, when you're feeling urgent, where is it that you won't go? You'll go anywhere in order to live. So don't become someone like that earlier rather than later. Let's become someone where our health is 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 kept. You know, people, if they say anything about health, people go there. But all we have to do is follow this word, which says he'll give us health. You don't have to pay money. This is better than having to climb up a mountain at dawn. But you treat God like he's worse than a hike up a mountain at dawn. So you're completely lying. And that's it's only when you're hit, when everything's been ruined and it's too late. You know, let's receive this blessing of peace earlier rather than later. So it's the blood of Christ which gives us this peace. And then we can also meet God. And when we meet God, we receive the blessings of prosperity. And a thousand generations do well. It's that person that gives profit to others. But if you're sick, how can you give profit to others? You you actually make all those around you suffer, even if it's making them worry. Is that a person? From now, let's live rightly. He will help us at dawn. He is the owner of all things. But it's when it's my, it, he first helps us to have a heart of peace and then he helps us with everything else. So where do, when can we have a heart of peace? Let's find Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. We will do well. So it's when your body's not feeling comfortable. You know, when you come to Pusan First Church and you pray, what happens? You become refreshed. This is what you have to taste of. So you have to receive these refreshings at dawn to receive help. You know, if you don't repent because you think it's dawn and and you don't receive his help and you only hear words that are pleasing to hear, then, you know, you ruin yourself and others. If you don't wash your face because you say it's too cold, the water's too cold, then your face becomes black. But if you just quickly wash, then you're refreshed. So, you know, you can't even compare this to that. So let's re- let's read. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. So what is this? It's by the blood of Christ that we draw near. So it's by the blood of Christ that we're, our hearts are at peace. And that's someone who can go toward God. So your heart's at peace, you meet God, and then you have prosperity. But those people who don't do well, they have this envyings and jealous where they can't forgive others. Those people who aren't being healed, who aren't receiving answers, you ask them, what's that bitterness in your heart? And they're like, and they, they always say something, someone who deserves death, someone that they want to revenge. Oh, it may not be with yourself directly, but something you've seen in your ancestors. So without them realizing, they've received these things from their ancestors and they've seen these things. And So envyings, jealousies, grumblings, complainings, arguings. Let's, let's give them all up this dawn and be forgiven. Let's close our eyes quietly. Let's receive refreshings. This is God's help. This is the way to meet God. This is the way to be relieved of all the resentment in my heart. And that's how we give profit to ourselves, our children and others.
What sadness do I have in my heart? It's not sadness. It's it's resentment and unforgiveness in your heart. That's what kills you. It kills your family. It harms others. So, what is it that makes you so so uh, um, unforgiving? You know, God says it's not a resentment. It's for you to receive blessings. But. How simple were we? Because we kept that as bitterness in our hearts. So, what is it that saddens you? You aren't you sad because it's not your greed isn't being met? Aren't you sad because your stubbornness isn't being met? We have to be released of this. God wants to give us better things through that to give us better things. So, if we give thanks by four-step repentance, if we change it to thanksgiving and we wait, then God will give us incredible blessings. But how have I dealt with this? You heard something that was so unfair. Become someone who's beautiful by four-step repentance. If you become someone who's beautiful, then God He will change it to unlimited blessings. So, at this dawn, let's be released and let's have a new start. As with blessings, Father, how have I lived thus far? Why is it at this dawn time when God says will help us? Why don't I have joy and gladness? Because there's something blocking. May we be forgiven of all this, and at the same time, may this be a time where we meet God, and may and we believe we will receive the keys of prosperity, and we believe our children will do well. God, you've told us to live like this our whole lives, but how have we lived? And and how? How can we even dare to ask of you? Even if you don't give, we have nothing to say. But Lord, you, we believe that promise that if we confess, we'll be forgiven. So all of our filthy thoughts in our lives, we confess. We have scorned your help at dawn. We have scorned and scoffed you. That past, we deserve to be beaten, and yet the fact that you've saved us, we thank you. We confess. May I be forgiven, and may my children be forgiven. And even now, may you've promised us this time where we can have a new start. Lord, we ask for forgiveness again. At this time, may we have a new start. May all things become new. May we receive blessings. May we receive health, and may we receive all wisdom and knowledge. We believe our children will do more well. That our future will be better. And as we live in the world, whatever happens, may we become someone who is beautiful. Not that we feel that it's unfair and we're saddened, but may we change to be a blessed man. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So, if your heart's still not feeling released, let's be forgiven by the Lord and let's receive this blessing of peace that He's promised to meet God, to receive health, to receive all blessings. <laughs>